Nvidia just showed off their 30 series in their reveal stream, the stream of many spatulas, but more importantly, many cards. We're gonna take a quick look at each card, the 70, the 80, and 90, and try and work out which one is right for you. I'm joined by Michael Hyam, resident other graphics card nerd. We're gonna chat about teraflops, frames, other buzzwords that you hear a lot in these streams. Ray tracing? Get excited. I love a bit of ray tracing, me. Yeah, hey. So the first first one, the cheapest of the bunch, the 3070, but by no means is the cheapest of the bunch any less powerful. The stats that we were seeing shown off were a little bit silly considering the price point. Uh, these cards are definitely being forged by like old wizard blacksmiths at some point. <laughs> it's a hell of a jump and they are not understating that at all. I think they're saying it's the biggest performance jump in any generation and they're, they're really not wrong. Faster than a 2080 Ti, a card that is now, I mean the prices are now going to plummet obviously, but at the time of recording a 2080 Ti is twice the price of a 3070. Yeah, yeah, the, the, so the RTX 3070 is the, the $500 option that they're offering for the new, for the new generation. And the claim is obviously, like you said, that it's faster than a 2080 Ti, and that's huge, um, all things considered. So this is based on the Ampere architecture, which is the, the evolution of the previous Turing architecture. It's, it's kind of the same thing, same build, I guess, with the multi-core processing with the RT cores taking care of ray tracing, the tensor cores taking care of DLSS and AI-based tasks. And then obviously the, the main streaming multiprocessor core is way more powerful, which is why you end up with a 3070 sort of mid to high tier option. That's more powerful than what we have currently at the high end. Um, so that's, that's really impressive. And the thing is also Nvidia makes these claims, uh, but they don't, they tend to be fairly accurate. Uh, and as we'll talk about when uh, we go to the 3080, which Digital Foundry actually got a hands-on preview with, uh, these claims are pretty close to uh, to what what's actual in reality. So, you know, this is it's pretty wild that you're going to get this level of performance for that much money, and it makes uh, you know. I think we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but you know, ray tracing now is a lot more prevalent than it was when the RTX 20 series came out. Uh, and then now is the time to kind of, if you want to jump into that, the, the market's there, the games are doing it, the cards are powerful enough to take care of this like it's nothing. So, uh, you know, having this much power at this price point is impressive and it's exciting. Yeah, definitely. The looking back at like the 20 series when ray tracing was announced it was like uh how many games really can actually take advantage of this but now like you said it's everywhere you are going to have to however wait an extra month eh, if you want to save a few bucks that's not the hugest deal but their flagship card always middle of the road always the one that they push hardest the 3080 that i think is going to be the one that a lot of folks are going to try and get their hands on, regardless of how thin the supplies are likely going to be. But with still like e even better performance, twice the performance of the 2080. Funny enough, one of the things I was most excited about w was the cooling and how quiet it was. <laughs> because, oh boy, yeah. the cards in my rig right now, they're noisy. Yeah, they, they can get hot and the, the, those, fins, those fans can uh, spin up uh, pretty fast, make some noise. But uh, yeah, like um, you're not just getting a lot more performance. There's a lot of things around the edges that are going to make these cards better. Uh, but if we're talking about the 3080 and the performance uh, that it's offering. So as I mentioned earlier, this is what Digital Foundry was able to test in a preview. They weren't able to put out solid numbers because I'm, I'm guessing that's based on embargoes and all that but they did relative performance comparisons to the 2080 to see if it is actually twice as fast. So they played games like Control, Doom Eternal, Metro Exodus, and they were getting around 70 to 90% performance boosts based on the 2080, the base RTX 2080 as compared to the RTX 3080. So that the Nvidia's claim of being twice as powerful is it's 
almost like it's pretty accurate. Uh, there also, of course, it depends on the situation, but that that is a huge performance jump. And Nvidia is claiming that this is the biggest, uh, like you said, the biggest jump in performance between generations. It's looking like that is also true. Now, the the 3080 is going to be your card if you want to if you're aiming for 4K 60 FPS. Uh, the current RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti can do that with some compromises, uh, native 4K, uh, if that's what your aim is. Uh, but this is a solid card that's definitely going to be able to to hit uh, that that performance if that's what you're looking for at $700. Uh, of course, that's that's the higher end option, and that's kind of what you expect to pay. But the the jump between generations is it's it's pretty wild. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's still a lot of people out there that see trying to get their rigs to, to play games in 4K as a little bit of, it, it seems a little bit scary sometimes or a little bit of a challenge, but now knowing how much power is behind the Ampere architecture and just the raw performance that we're seeing, I think it, 4K is now going to be much more accessible to PC mm -hmm. gamers. But what if 4K isn't enough? What if you want 8K? <laughs> what if you want a silly amount a resolution that they can't even show off on stream. <laughs> what if that's that, uh, what if that's the kind of thing that you know floats your boat? Too many K's out there now. <laughs> oh man! So yeah, the Nvidia always likes to hit you with the wild flex, and that's what they did with the RTX 3090. Uh, Jensen Wong pulled that out of his oven, uh, showed off this beastly card. I bet it smells it is delicious. <laughs> oh man! Come here, Papa. Uh, I bet it's cake. You cut into that thing, it's actually a, a slice of cake. This thing is huge. It's physically huge. It's also $1,500. So this is not something that most people are going to gonna even consider. This is like the enthusiast level. If you got way too much money to blow, um, you know, hey, we always say eat the rich. So if you're going to buy this, I'm, I'm looking out for you. Uh, but, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, th th it's pretty wild. This is this is their flex, and they're claiming 8K 60 FPS. Of course, there's no real way to you know test out which situations can actually do that, uh, if that claim is true enough. Uh, but I mean, hey, if they're gonna put out a $1,500 card and that's what they're claiming, you know, uh, that's. You know, you could probably at least pull that off in most situations. But the thing is, like, of course, like, not m many people are even thinking or doing 8K at the moment, yeah. or probably won't be in the near future. So this is definitely something that you know, if you're if you're about that life, fine, go ahead. But this is that's the 3090 is just kind of that. It's like the t the Titan RTX and then the Titan XP before that. Uh, it's just that that ridiculously powerful card. Uh, but I mean, the fact that they're able to do that uh, is it's pretty wild, and it kind of kind of tells you what what um, Nvidia has in store with their graphics architectures and the graphics cards that they're putting out. It's the card you list on your Tinder bio to try and get more dates. I'm running, hey. I'm running a 3090. Swipe right. <laughs> I'll show you 8K, baby. Oh my God, has that has that worked well? Or you report back to me if it. I'm if, running. If I'm running two 1080s, so no one's swiping right, mate. <laughs> Hate to see it. But when when he showed that thing off and the size and the scale of it, I thought I was scared for the rest of my machine, honestly. If that thing that thing's gonna fall down and gonna take something with it. I was like, that might I'm gonna need a new case. It's not gonna fit in this case. And that's the thing with these big flex cards, is that it's not only fifteen hundred bucks for the card, you're probably also going to have to spend some more cash on making the most of that GPU. Because my monitor can do 4K, what's the point of me buying an 8K card? I'm gonna, gonna have to buy a new yeah. monitor, new this, new that. It's, like you said, it's big flex time. But the thing that unites all these cards is some of the really exciting stuff that's available just in the new generation. We, we were chatting earlier and I think that they've made a really interesting and conscious decision to not only have a card that looks better but a card that feels better and makes experiences better with things like nvidia broadcast gonna be real nice for streamers omniverse machinimas like a very niche thing but i think that's super cool but something that i think a lot of people that invest in these cards are going to feel is the nvidia reflex gamers are going to make this connection where they get this new card and automatically 
or with a little more help, they're hitting their Valorant shots, their Battlefield shots, their CSGO shots. It's going to be a piece of machinery that they're going to think, oh, this is actually making me a better gamer. So the suite of other tech that's coming with the raw performance as well is something to be equally excited for, I think. How they're making the most with AI and all the ray tracing developments with games that aren't even out yet. It's it's a real interesting look forward as to where Nvidia's head at, is at. I think. Yeah, it's the, you're not just getting a video card; you're getting a package. Uh, of course, like I'm personally, I'm only looking for raw performance and the ability to do ray tracing and DLSS uh, when games implement that. But you're also getting like RTX voice, and you're getting all these like the broadcast streaming abilities that you know take care of your framing for you with you with your own camera that you're streaming from and puts you into frame you can do different backgrounds uh, like the machinima stuff you said the rtx io stuff is also really impressive for getting the most out of your out of your storage drives it's there's there's so many things that are going into this hdmi 2.1 uh, is also across all the the new rtx cards so you can actually do 4k 120 fps uh, if you have that level of display and these cards are likely to be able to uh, hit 120 frames per second. In some cases, of course, you would want to fiddle with your settings uh, and different things. But like, if you're also using DLSS, which is an anti-aliasing thing that is really wild to boost performance and give you close to, if not the same uh, image quality as native 4K. Uh, on top of that, is it's like. There's, it's a whole ecosystem that NVIDIA is packaging with these cards, no matter what you're kind of looking for out of it. You know, the fact that they have 3070 for the mid-range, the fact that they have the 3080 for someone who's looking for that even higher end performance, twice of what we have now with an RTX 2080. Um, it's really, it's, it's uh, yeah, you're getting a lot more than just a powerful video card, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and um, I think they've, they're doing it at a really interesting time. It's now in the same conversation as the Xbox Series X and the PS5. It seems like they want to be, they want to say, hey, we're we're part of the next generation of gaming as well. And with combining the price point of the cards and showing off stuff that's really recognizable in gaming right now, both looking forward with Cyberpunk and Call of Duty as well as obviously the household name of Fortnite, it almost feels like they're making a bid towards the people that are unsure if they want to start PC gaming, if they want to make the jump to getting a PC. And like seeing the competitive price, we still don't know console prices. I think it's going to sow some seeds of doubt to people that might have been saving up their buckaroos for the new console and thinking, maybe I'll maybe I'll make the jump to keyboard and mouse. Maybe I'll get a PC now. And I think that's really smart. Definitely on purpose, because you know, these folks, they got the big brain. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, if you're thinking about um, making the moves, you should also consider what you have now. Like, for example, I have an RTX 2080. I don't necessarily think that jumping to a 3070 would get me uh, that big of a noticeable jump, but I am looking at the 3080 because that is twice as powerful as what I have now. If you have anything below that, uh, you know, the 3070 is looking real nice. You're getting a, better than a 2080 Ti for 500 bucks. That's wild to me, uh, and of course it depends on availability because uh, these cards, if it launches during any normal time, they're still very hard to get in their launch window. Yeah. Take into consideration that manufacturing processes have changed because of COVID-19 and all that, so I'm not sure what availability is going to look like, uh, but if anything, it might be harder to get one of these cards around launch window, so take that into consideration as well. Um, but. Just based on what we know about the cards so far from the reveal and Digital Foundry's preview, it's looked like the RTX 30 series is the, is, is actually like very impressive. Yeah, um, I mean, our objective is to get our greasy mitts on those cards and show you guys how impressive they really are. As soon as we have some hands on, we'll try and get you some, maybe some 8K Cyberpunk if 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 it's possible. Like I, I mm. oh yeah, we're gonna- Expense an 8K monitor. <laughs> Yeah, we can do that, right? Hey, Rob, hook it up. We're gonna get our hands on every card, 70, 80, 90. And as soon as we've got our greasy mitts on it, we'll test them 
not to death, because I still want to play with them, but near to death, so we can tell you, is it actually worth it? Tell you our hands-on experience, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that in the coming weeks and months. And if this stuff is getting you excited, and you are thinking of making the jump to PC gaming, Haim and I have made a video that's coming out tomorrow, talking all about the everything you need to know for first-time PC builders. So, maybe this time in a few months, you've built your first PC and you can nerd out with us when we're playing 8K 60 frames Cyberpunk. Oh boy, just, just saying that <laughs> brings a smile to my face. Alright, so that's our first impressions after seeing the NVIDIA stream of many GPUs and many spatulas. Are you excited? Let us know in the comment section below. Like I said, we're going to show you off everything these cards can do in the coming months. So, to see all that, make sure you subscribe to GameSpot.